Okay. Last week at the Board of Health, we saw graphic evidence of the pressure administrators and public officials can bring to bear on allegedly independent boards. Traditionally, superintendents have had a powerful influence on their boards. How will your tenure be different? I think first we must understand that as school board members, the superintendent is our employee. Her influence with us is to implement the policies that we set. Her influence should also, I think, be part of what the vision is for the school system. That influence should be one that, in collaboration with the school board members, allows us to create an environment, again, where student achievement, their safety, is paramount to anything that we do. That's the type of influence I think the superintendent should have. Okay, next uh, to Shonda Harris Muhammad. Wow, um, phenomenal question. As an educator, again, the board hires, terminates, evaluates the superintendent. The superintendent is, he or she, the first line of communication for all personnel in the school system. However, the school board supplies the gas. The superintendent drives the car. So if there is no gasoline, then the superintendent can't drive. And what do I mean by that? We have to be a board of common sense and know the power that we have, good, better, and different. And hopefully and prayerfully, it's positive power. But I just think there's a disconnect somewhere between uh, the current superintendent and the current board as a whole. What that disconnect is, it's, it's a variety of things. But the communication should be better. I think accountability should be um, more explained, even though I am fully aware that there's an evaluation system in place for all superintendents that's required by BDOE. However, I, I, I think that um, often the, the lens is a little foggy and somebody needs to wipe it a little bit so it can be clearer. Um, so the influence um, has to be positive and it has to be a relationship, of course, with the superintendent and with the school board. Thank you. Um, I want to use my two minutes to try to address a number of items here. So I'll simply say to the question, the superintendent is an employee and also a partner of the school board. Uh, I want to address the Fisher, Carey, work that is a part of our strategic plan. The parents of Fisher and Carey are aware that they are starting a Stephen Covey Leader in Me project for K through five students to learn the seven habits of highly effective people this year. This is also the planning year for both of those schools to begin implementing a change in grade configuration to introduce the sixth grade next year and then move that on to a K-8 implementation. There is also another school over, uh, over, uh, <coughs> um, that is implementing the balanced calendar or the, uh, the, the full school year as a part of its strategic plan action item. Uh, we are uh, also taking a long-term focus for a number of other programs, uh, particularly the work in our football program. And then uh, I also wanted to make a point that the IT systems in the Richmond Public Schools won a green award for urban schools and our energy conservation program has been very effective in our aging schools 
by financing the, the uh, work in those schools from the energy savings that's being realized. And lastly, I want to say regarding the $23.8 million deficit, 90% um, of the task force recommendations were recommendations that the school board re reviewed, and the other ones were recommendations that would cause the benefit cuts or salary cuts of employees uh, that we did not adopt. And so uh, this, this is the result of eight years of budget reductions that the Richmond Public Schools has faced. So I want to appreciate Thank you for this time. Thank you. Now, Mamie Taylor. Thank you. The superintendent, rather the current superintendent or future current um, superintendent, primary job is to better educate our children. And that takes me back to what educating our children is all about, and that is to bridge the gap using all of the facts. It's going to take everyone from our families to our administrators, which include the superintendent, to our communities, teachers, and students all working together to make our educational experience for our children better. So as far as the superintendent, I would have to say that it's her responsibility to answer to the public just as our school board representatives are supposed to do. Thank you. Thank you.